Lecture 3, Utopias. St. Thomas More, in his book Utopia, describes an ideal political order. Similarly, when we refer to an imaginary ideal political order, we call it a utopia. The word utopia comes from either the Greek utopos, meaning a good place, or utopos, meaning no place. A utopia, therefore, can be understood as a heavenly political order that does not exist on earth. Since it is impossible to fully bring down heaven on earth, efforts to create a perfect political order are doomed to fail. Belief in the perfectibility of the political world has led to numerous failed attempts and much devastation, as people strive to achieve a perfect society but always end up with the same result, be confronted with the mystery of human freedom, and, within this freedom, people who choose disorder, evil, and irrationality. As we strive to improve the inherently imperfect nature of world politics, it is imperative, asserts Christopher Check, that we remain aware of the fallen state of a world due to original sin and personal sin. And remember that evil is not only personal, but also involves a supernatural spiritual component involving in which, as St. Paul writes, our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And that's from Ephesians 6, 12. Utopias and dystopias, philosophical, economic, psychological, and sexual. A philosophical utopia. The Greek philosopher Plato, in his book The Republic, describes a utopia ruled by a philosopher king. According to Plato, only if a philosopher rules as a king will a political entity be free from evil. What do you think he meant by this, and who is a philosopher? One trait of a budding philosopher, from Greek meaning lover of wisdom, is that he ought to show his love not to some one part of that which he loves, but to the whole, and that's what Plato states. Those who have a love of the parts as comprising a whole are lovers of the vision of truth since they love that which perfects and unites the parts. Now do you see why a philosopher, as defined by Plato, makes the best politician? A politician to maintain unity must be concerned with the whole. He demonstrates his concern for the whole when he avoids favoring one part at the expense of others. One disturbing feature of Plato's utopia is that it is based on a noble lie that the rulers of the state tell to persuade the members of the state to love her like a mother. According to the noble lie that the rulers tell before being born, every person received one of three types of souls. A philosopher soul, a military soul, and a farmer worker soul. The American political scientist Leo Strauss has applied Plato's noble lie to modern politics. Are noble lies necessary for leaders to tell to maintain political unity? What do you think? Since there is no falsehood in God who is truth, and we are made in his image and likeness, can there be such a thing as a noble lie? Scientific Utopia The English philosopher Francis Bacon, in his book New Atlantis, and Francis Bacon lived in the 1500s and 1600s, so in his new book New Atlantis, describes an island called Bensal, Bensalman, Bensalem. Bensalem represents utopia that is founded on scientific technology developed by state-sponsored scientists working in the island's institution that resembles a modern research university called Solomon's House. Economic Utopia. According to Karl Marx, the engine that drives political progress is conflict springing forth from economic competition between classes. These conflicts are resolved into higher and higher forms of political forms until the final form of a classless, propertyless, and conflictless state is reached. To hasten this inevitable development of history, Marx taught a scientific socialism that educates people in trends of history that they can supposedly encourage. In part two of the Communist Manifesto, Marx outlines ten steps, almost like ten commandments from heaven on earth. 
that generally will be necessary to take to reach this economic utopia. And I'm going to read them to you. They might be of interest. One, abolition of property and land and application of all rents of land to public purposes. Two, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. Three, abolition of all rights of inheritance. Four, confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels. Five, centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Six, centralization of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state. Seven, extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. The bringing into cultivation of wastelands and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with the common plan. Eight, equal liability of all to labor. Establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. Nine, combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries. Gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by more equitable distribution of the population over the country. And ten, free education for all children in public schools. Abolition of children's factory labor in its present form. Combination of ed education with industrial production, etc., etc. End of quote. Psychological Utopia The American psycho psychologist Burris Frederick Skinner in Walden II described yet another utopia that is like Bacon's, but a more modern version. Skinner died in 1990. However, unlike Bacon's vision of a scientific utopia, Skinner's utopian rural community is not based on technological invention science can produce, but rather on behavioral changes in man that the social science of psychology can encourage. It is, it is to do so by positively reinforcing behavior appropriate for a perfect political world. A disturbing feature in Skinner's ideal community is that children are raised by the entire community and not by their parents. In his introduction to his novel, Skinner defends this radical idea by writing, and I quote, if the world is to save any part of its resources for the future, it must reduce not only consumption, but the number of consumers. It should be easy to change the birth rate in an experimental community. Parents would not need children for economic security. The childless could spend as much time with children as they like, and the community would function as a large, affectionate family in which everyone would play parental and filial roles. Blood ties would then be a minor issue. Contrary to Skinner, the Catholic Church has consistently identified the family with the, as the basic building blocks of a healthy society. States will be healthy and cohesive to the extent families are healthy and intact. Only in cases to protect children from abusive parents may a state legitimately deprive parents of their children. Sexual Utopia The American Con Connecticut-born feminist Charlotte Perkins Gilman, in her utopian novel, her land describes utopian society that is composed entirely of women. The women of this ideal society re reproduce asexually, that is, without sex, without interaction with men. Not surprisingly, the babies they give birth to are only girls. In the absence of men, these, this female society is free of war, excessive competition, and domination. In place of these traits, which men are typically associated with more than women, is cooperation, affirmation, and trust. Eventually, in the novel, a group of men discovers these women who have been living without men for many years. Dystopia. A dystopia is the opposite of a utopia. In a dystopia, people are treated unjustly and in terrible ways. Can you think of a modern-day dystopia? What are its features? One common feature of dystopias are it's dictatorial leaders who are so intent in creating the perfect society that they end up creating a tyrannical political environment that resembles hell. Dystopia can be understood as the actual result after political leaders attempt to create, attempt to force a utopia as described, but not limited to the five we have just mentioned. God bless.